Hey, what's going on? This is gonna be a quick video. Once again, before my son wakes up, I have a hard time making these videos because I am a busy father and hope you're doing good today. And I wanna make a video about kind of to help understand, um, help adoptive parents understand what an adoptee may be experiencing, may be going through. If you're looking at your adoptee and you're thinking, why? Why is that? Why are they acting so crazy out of nowhere? I don't get it. I've given them love in a new home, and I don't understand. Like, why? Why are they acting so ungrateful? Uh, everything I talk about on this channel is going to be from my experience, so I can only ex speak from my experience. And my adoptive parents—they were just completely just did not know what they were dealing with with me. I didn't know what I was dealing with. Um, now that I'm 39, I'm, I'm adoptee out of the fog, meaning I see clearly to, you know, 2020 is always a uh, clear vision. I have clarity on why I acted so crazy, why I had anger issues, depression, suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideation, suicide attempts, uh, emotional problems, was in and out of AA for 20 years. This is going to be... The biggest things that adoptees are experiencing um, as far as loss, uh, a lot of people don't acknowledge these, validate these, or even know that uh, adopt adoptees are experiencing these. They mostly see that, you know, what they gain. Um, maybe you adopted a kid from a trafficked area or a drug, uh, you know, a drug addicted mother. My mother was uh, an addict and she was not fit to care for me whatsoever or my biological brothers or sisters. And that would have just been horrible for me either way. Like, and I was adopted into a white family and I can't deny that. Yes, I got a family. Um, I was given a family. They are my family. Um, but to me, they were strangers. Um, they didn't look like me. They didn't act like me. They didn't feel like me. There was no connection, no bond, no nothing it was very awkward and I stopped talking very young around my family I couldn't open up about anything and um that's why I'm just gonna get into it like I cannot deny the gains that yes you got saved from foster care saved from whatever traumatic situation you were in um and there was family there was more money there was more opportunities and those are great. I, I wouldn't have wanted to have it any other way, but denying the losses that I'm gonna speak about almost makes things more overwhelming for adoptees and the lack of acknowledgement, validation, and even the dismissal of these losses make it so I didn't even know what to do with myself because I was so overly depressed and overwhelmed with things that I was basically being gaslit that told weren't there because of saying how much I've gained and how lucky I was. So the first loss that I have written down is our biological family. Obviously we lose that. It is just like losing a parent, losing a, uh, a father. And it's almost worse because it's not in death. There's no closure. Everybody around you is not on the same page. They're saying how lucky you are. There's no mourning process. There's no time to grieve. It's almost like this big lie that's covered up. Like how dare you act in a way that's so ungrateful for your new adopted family when in reality uh, a human being has lost their parents that is 100 percent a fact they don't know that they are supposed to be grieving or are mourning and a lot of times i was told to stop feeling sorry for myself my dad would say uh you know you you feel sorry for yourself a lot eric and uh you know <laughs> this really it's really not good for you and all this time I realized I was just mourning and grieving my biological family and being dismissed as feeling sorry for myself was incredibly hurtful and I didn't realize what was going on. Uh, genetic mirroring, um, I've had my son on a few times. We both have big eyebrows. We both have uh, the same facial features. Um, when you look at somebody and know that they are part of my DNA, I never got that growing up. I was around other people i was the only adoptee in my family i was the only latino i was told i was american whenever i asked and was bullied for what race are you and i didn't know what i was and 
that was devastating for me when I felt so isolated to lose genetic mirroring and you don't even you're not even told what it is or what what's going on you're just growing up and looking at all the faces surrounding you and your family every day nobody looks like you nobody talks like you nobody acts like you um genetic mirroring as in like personality traits me and my son he's two years old and we have the exact same temperament the exact same kind of jokes and me and my wife are always talking about oh he's just he got that from you ha 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 oh he got that joke from you or he does this and he tries to make people laugh and he's cutting jokes and and he's not even probably aware of what he's doing right now but he's just like me and my wife and i never got that growing up and and to to be looked at like you're crazy like you're like my parents just looked at me like god you have it so good you have it so good you're so lucky you don't even know what you want you what you have and to not even know that i was missing genetic mirroring it's just very confusing for an adoptee growing up. Medical history, I don't even think I have to go into that one. It's medical history, it's, it's vital to your health. Um, if you have a severe health problem, go in, doctor ask you what's your medical history, you have no idea, it's horrible. Original birth certificate, I was in my late 30s when I realized that I had a fake birth certificate and that wasn't even my real one. And I, you just feel like you've been lied to, you don't know where, what your real name was, what your original name was. And this is just my experience. Other people may have gotten their original ones. Uh, your bloodline, your last name, your heritage, your culture. This one was huge for me when I met my wife. She was Filipino and um, she just laughed at me for how uncultured I was. And just going down the line of like being bullied for looking different in Georgia. I was just surrounded by white kids and my parents just saying race doesn't matter we don't see color just makes you feel like you're you don't mean shit people can't see you uh you're being bullied for being uh brown and told to go back to where you where you came from uh all sorts of names and then your family doesn't act like anything is really different with you um you're you don't speak the same language my my biological family speaks a little bit of spanglish uh, but they were surrounded in that culture and um, it just when I finally met them at 21 it was a, a huge difference which yes I got that uh, reunion with them but I also felt like an outsider from my biological family because I was so wildly different and uncultured and uh, it just caused a lot of teasing and laughing which is doesn't seem like a big deal but it, it really affects me like it doesn't feel great it just makes me feel more isolated um transracial adoptees uh, especially if it's from a white family and any other culture it just uh, it makes me it makes me want to reach out to any people that i see on these youtube videos or tv that are like oh i adopted three Chin chinese kids or my three kids are adopted from a different country and I'm just like, God, I really fucking just want to grab you by the neck and say, I hope you know that just because you saved them from a horrible situation, there's, that's the beginning of new problems for them. And not just, I'm going to raise them in a loving home and give them more opportunity. There is trauma there that they are going to have serious questions to. And if you're not open and honest about it, it could be the, the, difference between life or death if they want to take their own life or not and it's that serious to me so next thing i have is our voice a lot of times the adoptees are ashamed to speak because they're shamed into not speaking like i said i stopped talking to my biological family i stopped opening up to them around middle school after i found out that just trying to open up to it about adoption you don't talk about that is basically the message uh you don't know how lucky you are you're being ungrateful you could have been raised in foster care and the way they say it is like you are being such an ungrateful little shit for even bringing this subject up and i, I just stopped talking around them i just didn't feel comfortable uh opening up and they didn't seem to care and they were just like oh something's wrong with eric so boundaries if you go through a traumatic experience you and nobody validates that for you nobody seems to give a shit about your race 
Nobody seems to care about educating you on adoption trauma or relinquishment. These are uh, one of the most ex traumatic experiences that uh, me as an adoptee have went through. Not being validated or acknowledged or taught about that and having to learn it all on my own just feels like my boundaries, my needs don't mean shit. And I was often pushed around and bullied because I was so quiet and I never understood that it was just by default, my boundaries didn't really matter because when your original birth certificate, your medical history, your biological family, and every face you see in your family is telling you how lucky you are, it just starts to get in your head. You start getting gaslit that, okay, what I need doesn't matter. Everybody's telling me how lucky I am. I must be doing something wrong. So you pr present yourself to the world like that in jobs, in school, in relationships. It's it's just uh, this blanket or like lens of rejection that you're doing something wrong when in reality you are not being seen, heard, or validated or acknowledged. And it's a fucked up place to be, at least for me. And having no boundaries is a terrifying place uh, thing to to have is you're going out into this world where there's a bunch of evil and mean fucking people that are going to take advantage of you and you know you have no tools no boundaries no way to stand up for yourself and then yeah you just it's a terrifying lonely place and you know i was drinking for like 20 years straight binge drinker because i thought something was wrong with me i was never taught boundaries my parents were terrible my dad was a pushover never really understood boundaries and how to implement them still working on it i'm a lot better now and i just refuse to like be quiet because i was gaslit for pretty much 38 years of my life and it's just not easy for me to be quiet anymore once i saw the the lies that i believed uh two more things you lose being seen, being heard, and being understood. Most adoptees that I've talked to and that I see making videos, they're just, they're unacknowledged, unvalidated, unseen. Like nobody sees the trauma and if they speak about it, it's like you are being such a fucking crybaby. Oh, everybody else has problems too. And like, yes, that is true, but it's still like, doesn't take away the fact that we are not validated in our own homes. Acknowledge that we have been through some of the worst trauma that a, a human being can go through, especially at birth with a baby that doesn't even understand what the hell's going on. It's just their being. It's like your being is, is being traumatized and you just grow up with that and it doesn't go away. Uh, your mom was separated from you. You're separated from your mother. And that is terrifying, especially at birth when you don't know anything. It's just a, it's a horrible thing to go unacknowledged and it doesn't get better if it gets dismissed. Uh, the hell, I can't even read my own writing. Home, Jesus Christ, give me a second. Oh, homeostasis of emotional and mental well-being. For me, I never felt like there was like a, a baseline, like, I'm always stuck in fight or flight. I always have like tense shoulders. I'm always like, like gripping my hands like this. Ever since I was little, I've had a very tense body and I started breaking out in sweats when like someone would put me on the spot and ask me questions. I would just break out in a sweat. And I'm always like, why can't I just get back to this like baseline? It always feels like a heightened state of paranoia and fear. And like, I don't fit in here. I don't fit in my house. I don't fit in my biological family. I don't fit in in school. I don't fit in in work. All these normal things that you're supposed to do. And then your parents are like, okay, well, you know, you're, you got to take responsibility now. And you're like, I have zero fucking idea how to deal with what's going on inside of me. And it's a terrifying place to be. And I'm sure a lot of other adoptees are experiencing this and if this does not get fixed, there will be more suicides. I'm convinced that, that there will be more suicides because it is unbearable to live a life where everybody around you thinks that you're just normal and fine and not even just normal and fine, but you have all the opportunities you were never given a chance for if you weren't adopted. And then these things go 
dismissed and unacknowledged and unvalidated by professionals and therapists. Um, it's a terrifying thing to, to experience as an adoptee, knowing that there's adoptees out there with good intention therapists and even adoptive families that have zero idea how to acknowledge and validate what an adoptee is going through. And um, sometimes we don't even know, or I don't even know how to, to say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Uh, I never knew I was supposed to be grieving my, my biological family or biological mother. And I never knew I was, I was in mourning or, you know, I was just told how lucky I was and how uh, ungrateful I was being and what an asshole I was and, uh, and I wanted to kill myself. So yeah, I just really, I really hope that, that we can understand more of the issue and it's not about gratitude. It's not about being ungrateful. It's about, uh, helping a traumatized kid. And, uh, I just, I really hope that, you know, I can put some hope in there out to an adoptee or, or adoptive parent to just just help one kid out there because it's it's a a very very dark place to be given a loving home with all the opportunities that you would have never had saved from a horrible place but still feel like you want to die every day so um i just hope i i can help somebody